Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself Jonathan MSP. This is Ukraine War News Update, first part thereof, the 17th of October 2023. Let's get straight to where we normally start, the Ukrainian general staff figures for the Russian losses for the day before. And we have seen very high figures for about a week uh, or the best part of a week. And that is still the case today, although slightly lower than yesterday. And that's probably a reflection of the Avdivka attacks from the Russians slowing down uh, to some degree. So 800 personnel losses is still a large number of uh, personnel losses. 14 tanks is not great. Uh, 20 armoured personnel vehicles is not great either, and 26 artillery systems is a high number. Maybe not as high as we have seen it over the last four days or so, but still really problematic numbers for the Russians. No multiple launch rocket systems or, or anti-aircraft warfare systems. No aircraft or helicopters, which is interesting because there are reports of a an, another third aircraft in a week being taken down. Third fixed wing aircraft that doesn't include the Mi-8 helicopter that went down the other day so they've had and oh my goodness we have some news about uh aircraft in today's video so there's been it's, it's been a bad 24 hours for aircraft for the russians actually it's been a bad week in, in general 11 drones two cruise missiles that will be from the night before probably 22 vehicles and fuel tanks and one piece of special equipment so pretty standard uh figures for vehicles and fuel tanks but high figures for most of the categories that are reflective of frontline activity taking place and we'll go to Andrew Perpetua the map maker we'll go to his uh, surveillance of video and imagery feeds from Russian and Ukrainian telegram and social media channels showing that again we've got a what Five to one loss ratio Russian to Ukrainian losses here, maybe even more. We, if we look at the Russian losses, there are surveillance and comms. There's a boat thrown in there, some artillery, some tanks, uh, infantry fighting vehicles, quite a spread across the different categories there. For the Ukrainians, we have uh, a truck, multiple launch rocket systems, probably their, their greatest loss there. There is a AS-90, that's a UK-provided self-propelled gun from the 90s. Uh, so they had 33 of those provided, I think. They've lost maybe four of them, maybe five now, um, which is you know, exactly what you'd expect in a war. But uh, yeah, so I think, again, we have another uh, situation where the Russians are losing far more than Ukrainians, and that is uh, one would assume pretty unsustainable. The Army of Drones project, project of drones has hit 428 pieces of Russian equipment in one week. So when you actually start looking at things like this list and you start seeing how many drones are taking out this equipment, I said yesterday, one of my commenters saying that this is a drone war. And drones are such an integral part of this war that uh, you know, warfare has changed. But, you know, going forward and, and the army of drones, this massive funding initiative of United 24 to uh, what well, I think last count was three hundred fifty million dollars, probably more than that now. That money is being pumped into buying and creating drones to provide to the front line, uh, training operators, giving all the ancillary equipment around the the drones to the point where. 428 pieces of Russian equipment have been taken out in one week by drones, provided by Army of Drones. Just phenomenal. I said before the counteroffensive that these drones will play a massively significant role in the counteroffensive. Now, this might not be at the moment translating into territorial gains. There might be a stasis on the front line, but that doesn't mean that there aren't things happening, that the Russians aren't being thoroughly degraded. And as we look at these figures on a daily basis, we see that their degradation is happening at, at a significant pace, uh, largely underwritten by the use of drones. So the Ukrainian digital minister Fedorov has said that Russia have lost 101 howitzers, 88 armored vehicles, 75 tanks in one week, and a lot of other equipment. It is, yeah, bad week at the office for the Russians. Um, and as I mentioned, there's there's lots of talk about uh, Su-25 being taken down yesterday. A third of its type destroyed in a week. That is uh, a, a loss in terms of the airframe, but also possibly I don't know the out the fate of the pilot here. But if if you've had a loss of three of these 
and a Mi-8 over the week, you're wondering how many crew members have been lost. That expertise, that training, you can't just replace those like that. Okay, on to long distance strikes. Overall, all six Shahid drones that were sent last night into Ukraine were shot down. One KH-59 cruise missile was shot down. Don't know how many were sent in total. And two F-300 missiles were launched. It's unknown if they managed to hit their target. So there is uh, a fair bit. Well, actually, not that much. There's a very small wave of attacks there. What does that tell you? Are they trying to probe for air defense lacking in certain uh, certain areas or is this just they don't have that much kit to send into ukraine is this reflective of a lack of stocks okay now three drones were shot overnight so the ukrainians sent their own drones uh, three of them over belgorod oblast were shot down according to the governor there I, I have no further details on that whether that is a true b um how many were sent were, were, there, were there 20 sent and only three shot down what happened to all the others if there were any others uh were those three genuinely shot down or did they find their targets and the russians claim they shot down? who knows don't know uh so no knowledge on that now this is the important claim okay where should we start goodness right let's start with i guess, I guess this video this gives you the sounds This is looking to Berdyansk on the southern coast of occupied Ukraine. Why I played that in its in its uh, in full was because there was consistent explosions. I don't know some people claiming claiming that is you know detonations, various sizes. They're cooking off rockets, cooking off. It could be there are claims that cluster munitions. Well, eight atoms were used. Okay, so what's happened? Berdyansk was hit. Where what, what's significant about Berdyansk? Well, it's the uh, air base for helicopters that we see. Um, let's find yeah here. So. We have seen satellite imagery of late uh, over time of these helicopters in Berdyansk. And there was talk about them being moved because of the claims about the ATACANs being delivered. Well, OK, last night there were there were hits on both uh, an airbase in Berdyansk and apparently in Luhansk as well. The two very separate places there. Uh, Russian mill blogger, fighter bomber, who is uh, indeed a, a pilot, says here um, that... It's not a good morning. Last night, the Ukrainians attacked with ATACANS missiles, our airfield where the Army aviation was based. One of the most serious strikes of all time in the SMO. So in the whole war, this is, if not the most serious, he says. There are losses in both people and equipment. It's pointless to write about the fact that, quote, we need to draw conclusions so this doesn't happen again. This will happen again as long as the war continues. We must be prepared for this. So that's real doom posting there. But... What's useful to know about um, fighter bomber is that is he is always pretty accurate in terms of losses. If he says something's happened, generally it has happened. We we can see the explosions, we can hear the explosions certainly from that video. Um, Evergreen Intel here says since July, I've been highlighting various helicopter airframes and associated units coalesced at Berdyansk, included or at least detachment size elements of the 39th separate helicopter regiment, 18th Army Aviation Brigade, with perhaps others. Um, and then, yeah, there is firm's data to uh, to confirm that there were some significant hits, and we. We know it's significant hits because the firm's data detected a number of fires, so three separate fires around three o'clock in the morning. The airport, heavily used by Russian rotary wing access, was uh, uh, assets was burning, um, and that of note, all three of those returns. So the firm's data, if you don't know, firm's data is a NASA satellite imagery that was developed to find out uh, whether there were wildfires burning, and has been used consistently throughout this war to detect whether there are significant explosions they they have to be you know bright enough and long enough so that they are picked up by you you can have explosions that then go out quite quickly and that's missed between like sweeps of a satellite uh 
if if you get significant fires that are burning for a long time they are going to be picked up but this says osin technical here says of note all three of those returns were collected on the same pass by veers noaa20 at a frp of 2.32 to 2.49 don't know what that means in other words whatever was burning was burning brightly okay so you've got big fires uh, taking place here uh, various claims about this um what else do we have i've got some here so uh another source claiming that the ukrainians launched 40 missiles against the russian air base I have no idea whether that's correct whether that could be misinterpreting uh, cluster munitions if they are ATACMs used I mean the claim as we saw from fighter bomber is that ATACMs were used that's obviously not confirmed but that's really significant if that is the case um, last night the Ukrainian armed forces conducted successful strike on the Russian helicopters at and other hardware at occupied Luhansk on Berdyansk judging by the panic of Russians on social networks the blow was quite uh, painful so that's yeah well worth Sitting up and, and taking note of, of this strike. Um, what else? There was one other claim. I think it is. Yeah, here it is. So, uh, in other news, a veritable deluge of uh, boots, belts, and bags is expected to be hitting the market. Uh, this is to say that there are significant losses, perhaps. A Russian mill blogger denies the official version that the attack was repelled by the Russian air defense expect he mentions large damages to ko 52 and casualties in Berdyansk at night the ukrainians launched a massive attack on the airfield where the, uh, these same ko 52s were based the air defense was unable to repel the, the attack at all the strike was delivered very accurately many helicopters were destroyed and there were also fatalities they say that the blow was dealt by these same attackums from fresh american supplies just going to be a lot of rumors flying around no confirmation yet of exactly what has happened but one can imagine that there is some serious uh, blows being dealt to the russian uh, airframe capacity if you know fighter bomber and and others are saying there have been serious helicopter losses the worst uh, this is the worst hit of the war i mean if that is if that is even half true it's bad if it's fully true it's really bad um okay so uh moving on to other kind of strikes this is possibly shelling but also some missiles so just a, a bit of an a, a accumulation of claims here consequences of russian missile strike this is missile in this case at mirrod poltava oblast on uh last night the attack injured three civilians including ten year old child poltava region, regional administration said uh, so usual kind of activity unfortunately that takes place on a daily and nightly basis in a day the russian shelled six populated areas of donetsk region according to national police the russians covered pervomysky from hradiv killing two people shells hit a private house so you can see more uh, results there as a result the artillery strike three private houses were damaged in the village of kalinyove uh, and then furthermore russia hit a five-story dormitory in slovyansk Donetsk region. Rescuers are working at the scene. Rescue work continues. There are people under the rubble. State Emergency Services adds. Now, Slovyansk is behind Bakhmut. There is every chance. I mean, I don't, sometimes you don't know with translations, but if this is a genuinely a dormitory, then there's a high chance that this could be a military establishment. That could be military personnel stationed there, um, but some damage done to that facility. Uh, so, yeah, you, as I say, usual stuff there. But the main piece of news is the strike on Berdyansk and Luhansk. I don't know. I know less about what what the strike in Luhansk was, uh, other than it was an airbase. So, propagandist Sladkov, uh, this is on to other bits and pieces, is preparing the audience for the lack of any actions by Russia in the coming months, as it needs five to ten times superiority over Ukraine to advance again. Looks like the past year was just not enough. Uh, for the second military in the world to accumulate potential uh, this is just um i guess it's useful to dip into the mind of of propagandists to see what their uh, their view of the war is at the moment um so let's go for that i believe 
that we should not expect, he says, active offensive actions from our military this autumn and coming winter is not about the weather until we create our offensive potential, which significantly exceeds the defensive potential of the Ukrainian armed forces five or better yet ten times. There is no need to give an order to attack. I mean, there's an interesting commentary we can add to this. The main point being that the Russians are going to completely struggle to be able to achieve five or better yet ten times the uh, offensive capability over the Ukrainian defensive capability with a degradation of their, their equipment at the rates that we've seen just over the last week, let alone the last month, let alone the last three months, let alone the entire war. The Russian forces are being continued degraded. The Ukrainian forces are being continually upgraded with new and better equipment. It's just not the case for the Russians. So they desperately need mobilization, but that mobilization will bring to bear just poor, you know, it will dilute the forces in terms of force quality uh, for the Russians. It's, it is not looking good for them. And I think this is talking to that. Yes, the armed forces of Ukraine will also strengthen, strengthen themselves, fill their arsenals with weapons and ammunition, recruit and train soldiers. And this must also be taken into account. But we, I believe, cannot afford to attack the way the Ukrainians are doing today. Even if we actually move forward, but at the cost of great losses. I won't list all the areas we need to improve, which is basically everywhere. I will name the main ones. Discipline of reality of reports with criminal liability for lies. Well, that's hard baked into the Russian system. The Vrenya, the lying up the, up the hierarchy. Yeah, I agree totally. You, Russian do need, Russia do need to start being more truthful with what they claim. But you are just a, a, an entire organization, the armed forces of propaganda and lies. And not, not least the, as I say, the, the mechanism of lying up the hierarchy. But you add to that the lies added to that by propagandists and by the media, the state media, then it's just a whole web of lies. Discipline of reality uh, of reports, so that's an opening one. Finally, create and supply modern domestic reconnaissance equipment, military artillery to the active army. Strengthen the capabilities of the aerospace forces, meaning the space area, in supplying intelligence to the fighting groups. Transferring the production of FPV drones, thermal images, long-range sniper weapons and frontline electronic warfare systems to state lines. Include the military industrial complex in the process of supplying the army, freeing civil society and responsible businessmen from this. In principle, a lot is all probably already being done. Supplies are being developed and prepared. Without this, I believe uh, I, it would be unfair to demand productive offensive actions from the military and all amendments require time, at least autumn and winter or even part of the spring. In other words, without sorting that out, you, you can't attack. And to sort that out will take you to at least next spring. And I doubt whether the, the Russian military industrial complex can adequately sort that out when it's under sanctions and it's having to rely on less decent kit from North Korea so yeah it's a real damning indictment of the situation of the Russians uh Israeli newspaper so another I think this is pertinent to the Ukraine well of course I do because I mentioned this a gazillion times the Israeli newspaper Haaretz published a must-read account of Exeter uh Jeta, um, X Twitter current disinformation problem it's not paywalled so I'll link it below the key points so I'll just walk through the key points Elmo that's the, the name for Musk I presume so he doesn't get um, flagged on the algorithms in Twitter so uh, Musk has got rid of external content monitoring services so there's no uh, voluntary code of conduct that Twitter has in order to make sure it's it's this information is being handled correctly there's no external uh monitoring services people holding twitter to account uh, in a formal way um to help twitter and much of the disinformation is happening in hebrew not just in english uh the same can be said it for for russian as well there are definite parallels we can draw here hamas and iranian run accounts are operating largely unhindered same can be said about the Russian accounts and pro-Russian, pro-Kremlin narratives. Takedowns that used to happen in hours are now taking days. Pro-Netanyahu and anti-vax accounts are spreading conspiracy theories about the Israeli military deliberately allowing Hamas to attack, so on and so forth. So this is um, just further uh, issues with disinformation in the information space, in this case with Israel-Palestine, but 
uh, also you can apply that to Russia. And in case you're wondering why, why Russia can't condemn Hamas, aside from their cosy relationship, Russians are doing this in Ukraine. This is referring to a CNN article. This is Julia Davis of Russian Media Monitor. Russians haven't condemned Hamas for doing horrific things to the Israelis because the Russians are doing those horrific, those same horrific acts to Ukrainians. Uh, this is uh, a, an, a segment about beheadings and the Russian beheadings of Ukrainian soldiers. We have seen, I have seen at least three pieces of video evidence of Russian beheadings of Ukrainian um, soldiers and, and uh, people. It is, it's not nice. Uh, and it would be pretty obvious double standards if the Russians then shouted about how disgusting uh, Hamas were. But of course, they're not going to do that because they... Uh, effectively helps amass so discord in the in the region so, so it's, a, it's a complete mess isn't it the israel palestine just uh as a point of interest for you i'm going to do a co-stream a live stream about the israeli palestinian conflict one of my uh one of my friends who who runs a much bigger channel called myth vision with my old uh, with my old my my other a tippling philosopher channel we have discussed he's had me on talking about many of my books uh to do with uh, cr criticism of you know, theology and uh, looking at religious texts and so on that's that's kind of my other life uh, and then I started this channel because I got obsessed with this but he's had me on talking about that and he did a video recently because his dad was in the special forces uh, who had operated in the area but mainly in, in, in other areas but talking about the conflict and took on a sort of pro-Israeli stance, and then half of his viewership loved it, and half the viewership hated it. And he watched my video yesterday on my ATP channel about looking at our biases and uh, and looking at the philosophy of morality to do with the Israel conflict, uh, Israel-Palestine conflict. And I'm going to use that as a foundation to go on and, and complete the series. And he's like. I need you to get on, hold me to account, let's have a discussion about what's going on. So we're just going to have a kind of a freewheeling discussion about uh, a live stream about the Israeli-Palestine conflict. We'll co-stream it so it'll be live on both of our channels. He's got a much bigger channel. He'll have like a gazillion watching, but it'd be cool if you guys want to uh, come and hang out uh, and watch that. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have that here at ATP Geopolitics because I think that that's where it should be housed. Um, but keep keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to get on with the next video, but the Birdie Ants kit is, is the main bit of news, and that could be, and Luhansk, really significant. I mean, especially if that's eight Atakams, this could be a game-changing moment. I don't know.